Welcome in YouTubers, it's your buddy Chopadong with another episode of DFS Diary coming at you today. We're going to talk NBA, a little bit of PGA, and we're going to get our minds right with a little bit of the tools that the PGA Research Station has for us today as we get the season started. So let's dive in right after this. First of all, I just want to thank you guys for following me on Twitter, giving me a little bit of a boost with the February sweeps. I look forward to buying somebody's subscription to, VI to the VIP program at DFSArmy.com this month. Again, as I've done the past couple of months, I love doing this. I need more help in so that I can buy even more. And we've got a coupon code NEW YEAR that takes 20% off of your first month inside DFSArmy.com. So head down to the comments section, click that link, hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. Become a VIP today and use that code New Year to trigger that 20% off. That helps me help you, which helps everybody get better at DFS, which is what we're all about. NFL, PGA, MLB, doesn't matter. We cover the sports. And I'm your jack of all trades, master of none, chop it on. Let's dive into the research station today. Let's break down that and one player pool as well as talk value and a little bit of raw point projection as we check all three boxes today and see who appears on all three lists. Those are the guys that we're going to dive into. Those are the guys that we're going to do a little bit more digging on that we're going to be listening around the industry for their names to come. And I will give you one tip kind of towards the end as we wrap up the, M the NBA stuff and then we'll dive into PGA stuff for those of you that are interested in the new season, 2019 season of PGA that's kicking off. Uh, if you haven't heard me mention it, I've got a good, I've got a, a childhood friend, Chris Thompson, that is a 42-year-old rookie out there. Uh, I used to practice putt with him when we were four and five years old on the putting green at the country club we belonged to as little bitty children. I'm rooting hard for him this year. His season kicks off this week, and I'll be watching as many of as many of his shots as they will air on TV, <laughs> if any, out there. As I hope to see him maintain his tour card and keep living the dream for all of us that didn't quite. Make it like he did, so congrats to Chris. What we're going to do is dive into the point guards first in NBA. And our projected fantasy uh, FanDuel points. I'll do DraftKings over on PGA side of things. As I sort that by descending order, I'm looking at the top five-ish. Russell Westbrook, Simmons, Curry, Walker, Lowry, right? I'm going to kick over to the and one player pool for you. And I'm going to show you if the position is deep or not. And it looks like it's kind of in the middle there. Westbrook, Curry, Lowry, Walker, Simmons, same five guys just shuffled up a smidge. Have the best matchups today as well. Best blend of matchup and talent, of course. Now we're going to look at the value and we're going to see what changes up. We see Beverly. Patrick Beverly at 26 minutes and 20 points is intriguing as a drop score candidate. Now, you've got three pretty good uh, point guards that I'm going to show you here in a second. Quinn Cook at 3,500, 20 minutes, not a good one. There's something coming along with DFS Army that I'm going to try and push into a section of an article or a brand new article, VIP only. I'm not sharing it with the public, but I'm going to call it turd traps. I'm going to call it value turd traps or value trap turds or something like that. There are a handful of them out there these days, and we'll talk about that, like I said, kind of at the end of the NBA section here. Kyle Lowry is obviously hitting the value marker today with 32 projected minutes. Russell Westbrook hitting the value marker today is a really good sign. And then Darren Fox is rounding out the top five uh, with Kemba Walker, Simmons not too far away. So what I'm looking at when I look at these guys is I see three guys that have hit all three lists, projected points and one and our value system, our value ranking or value projection, whatever you want to call it. And we're looking at uh, Kyle Lowry, Russell Westbrook, Kemba Walker. Write those guys down. Those are the guys you need to be digging into. If you see anybody else there, you may want to throw them in some GPPs, but these are the guys supposedly with the best projections and the best value to, for their salary and great matchups. That's who I would be focused on first as I get my research started for the day. Over on the shooting guard side, Okogi top, pops to the top. And again, drop score type candidate in the low 4,000s. 33 minutes, 27 points projected value of 6.3x. That would be great. That would save you. That would, that would be buying low, man, right there. It would be great. Now, Daniel Hamilton, not so much. 23 minutes. I want somebody who's projected to play. Somebody who's projected to get me some opportunity. If something opens up later and news changes, that's why you follow our breaking news feed here in the NBA section. Then you'll know about it, and you'll know who gets the minute bumps. And if it becomes Daniel Hamilton today, then so be it. That would be a way out. But until then, I'm not really looking at him. Even though he ranks high on our list, he might be one of my turd traps. 
today. Alec Burks, however, 31 minutes. 4,500. Not terrible. Danny Green, value. If you notice what we're looking at when we were by raw projected points, we had uh, Bradley Beal. I didn't, I don't guess I didn't show you that. Well, look at the value here. Look at the low pricing here, okay? Now, let's run over to the, the FanDuel projected points, and let's show you the new ranking. Beal, Booker, Depot, Butler, Thompson, Heald. That's if Booker plays. You know, you've got yourself kind of a stud and scrub type situation where you've got a list of maybe five to ten names of shooting guards that you can be looking at that are maybe viable options. Devin Booker is the only one on all three categories when it comes to the and one system, the value, and the projected points. Devin Booker is the only one, so he's one that I would definitely key on tonight and do my research into and make sure he's going to play. But that would be where I would get started. With a wide open position like that and a volatile position of, of shooting guard, then I might be looking to take some value, or I might be looking, you know, I'm, I've just, I've got a bunch of different ways my construction can go. We'll have to wait and see how it goes as the day progresses. When I look at the small forward, sorted by points again, that one went by value again too. But if I sort by points, I'm looking at Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Daniel Gallinari, Josh Richardson, Justice Winslow. Is it a shock that these three guys are at the top all the time? It shouldn't be. Should not be blowing your mind. Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant have 20 and 1 ratings. Those are really, really good scores. Of course, you see a 17, an 11, and a 12, and then it pretty much drops off down below 10 from there. So a relatively short position tonight, which means we might be interested in these three guys here, at least one of them. When I'm looking at the value, I see Paul George at 5.1. That's an intriguing spot. When I shift and sort by value, Otto Porter comes to the top. Look at the, there's there's decent minutes here, except for Michael Kidd Gilchrist. He'd be the one I'd watch. I don't know about Kelly Oubre either. Not a real consistent player. Not scheduled for 20 points anyway. Even the 5.1x and drop score candidate might find better drops elsewhere. Otto Porter's definitely in the mix. Paul George definitely in the mix. Mikhail Bridges would be next on my list. I'd skip over the low minutes, guys, and go Bridges, Leonard, and Bembry with Paul George only one on all three lists. So right now I've got Lowry, Westbrook, Kemba Walker, Devin Booker, Paul George on all three lists. These are guys I'm, I'm looking into heavily. The other thing I would tell you tonight, we've got scheduling nightmares. And this is one way, one area that I would be focused here. I'll go back to the points because just off the list, five and six, Richardson and Winslow and Miami, Denver has played a lot of games recently. They should be tired, and that should lead to Miami not necessarily winning the game outright or scoring 140 points or anything like that, but it should lead to them scoring more points. It should lead to them possibly winning the game, which means these guys should be bringing value tonight. There's a good, good chance that Miami brings value tonight. There's a great chance that Phoenix brings value tonight because Sacramento has the same issues. Okay? These are little bitty things little bitty positive EV decisions that we talk about that make the difference over the long run. If you pick up on these little things and capitalize on them, now you're going to have some good nights and some bad nights. But most of the time, if you don't go overboard and roster four of them, you know, one or two, pick a couple of them, give them a little bit of a boost. <clears throat> and that's what you're really, really looking for when it comes to bringing value to your lineup because these guys are underpriced or should be underpriced for the matchup. That's Richardson and Winslow tonight, potentially. Low on the value score, which is very, very interesting, 4.2 and 4.3. Very, very interesting. You might want to temper expectations about them. Focus on a Devin Booker who hits all three lists. Power forward. The thing I will show you here, when we get through the points, I'll show you the and one because I want you to see how shallow this position is. I don't know why it keeps sorting off by, I guess it keeps going by value. I don't, I don't know why it's defaulting to that. But we've got Collins, Draymond Green, Tobias Harris, Larry Nance, Montrez Harrell, maybe a little Ibaka, Psyche, Siakam. Those guys are in there. Who's that? Larry Nance at 5.9. little Cleveland. Interesting. 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 5.1 up here, Golden State for Draymond Green. Draymond Green hits all three lists, by the way. I can tell you that ahead of time. Hits the top five value, top five and one, and top five projected points. When I sort out by the and one, and I wind up with only three names on my list, that tells me the position is incredibly shallow, and I'm going to need to key on some of these guys. Interesting, Josh Jackson's in there because, again, in only 22 minutes and a 4.5x, he's got a great matchup, but he might be a turd trap. 
He's drop candidate if you want to use him, but I, and he's in Phoenix, which gives you, you know, San, Sacramento should be having some trouble tonight. Eh, still might call him a turd trap. Fire beware. Run off into the centers. And if I look down here at the projected points, and then we'll go back to the value in a little bit, because I'm just doing things in order in my head. I'm looking at the projected points. Embiid, Carl uh, Anthony Towns, Jokic, Aiton, Whiteside. Whiteside in Miami is very intriguing to me tonight. 28 minutes is plenty if he doesn't get into foul trouble. We know he's got 60-point upside. We're not sweating that. We know he's got a good matchup going up against, well, he's got Jokic to deal with, but we know he's got a decent matchup if they're tired and if they're a little bit slack or if they just rest their players. And Jokic doesn't hit the minutes that he normally hits. Whiteside might go nuts. He's a, I think he's a good GPP-type pick tonight. I think he's risky. I think he's got volatile production. Uh, we know that his minutes get cut kind of towards the end of the game sometimes, but I think there's something about tonight that's very, very intriguing. I might throw him out there in some GPPs and hope that he goes for his ceiling of 50 to 60 points because if so, at 7,300, he's absolutely smashing value. DeAndre Ayton is another one. Phoenix facing Sacramento. 5x, 33 minutes, 40 points, priced way down on FanDuel. Big bargain on FanDuel according to, uh, compared to DraftKings. That would be another one I'd be looking at. Okay, now what were we talking about? These are the ones, okay, so on the list, Draymond Green for power forwards was on all three lists, and Ayton was on the list for all three centers, or all three lists at center. So that gives us Ayton, Draymond Green, Paul George, Devin Booker, Kemba Walker, uh, Russell Westbrook, and Kyle Lowry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven names to really key in on. You may be looking at some of the Phoenix or Miami guys for a little bit of value. I do like White Whiteside as a GPP type of play today. For some reason, he just keeps popping and sticking out in my head. And the bottom line is you're going to use this in conjunction with our coaches' picks. We have something more in the works today. These boomers' picks are actually coaches' picks. You're going to see tabbed over results of all of our coaches' picks. We've got three coaches on duty today. And then we've got uh, five articles coming out today. So we've got more VIP material than you could possibly want that our VIPs are going to get access to that the free public does not. So there's plenty of, of room to kind of shift and formulate your game plan. And, of course, our, our coaching channels are what really set us apart from anybody else because the interaction with those coaches, what were you thinking about this, explain to me a little bit more about that. I'm deciding between this player and this player, here's why. I see this for value, I see this for usage, I see this for a minutes boost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Help me break the tie. That's what our coaches will do. Help me allocate contests, which I'll show you at the very, very end of this video as my little tip for you today. So these are things that we bring as value added to you, our VIPs. When I'm talking about, to, uh, what I'm going to talk about here real quick, 30 seconds or less, is the overall value structure system and the turd traps that I was talking about. We were talking yesterday in our coaching channels about using these guys that are high, high value that the optimizers are forcing into your lineups. I don't think that FanDuel has the drop score format. I don't like the drop score format, but I don't think that the bigger sites and the optimizers have that format conquered. And I'm seeing a lot of inexperienced players at the tops of leaderboards. And that's not to take anything away from them, it's only a matter of time before these algorithms catch up and exploit the, you know, the flaws in that scoring system. But when, and, and until they do, everybody has a fighting chance. And I think that's why we're seeing more volatility this year on FanDuel. Now, DraftKings Army's been smashing it, utterly smashing it. We're shifting a lot of our coverage in that direction. We're shifting a lot of our focus in that direction because we've just been too consistent over there with too many big wins that we're just, I mean, why would you play where you're losing? You know, but until then, we will focus a little bit on trying to decipher some of the weaknesses in, inside that format and try and figure out maybe how to solve it because we do have people playing on both sides. Turd traps is one of them where when a guy is projected for huge value, he's very tempting to go get. Oh, look at, you know, Okogi and Sarek and Nance up there at the top of the value list. And that's great. But you need to make sure that they're getting playing time. You need to make sure there's a reason why they're underpriced. Are they just underpriced because they're guys that are typically underpriced by the sites because they suck? Or, you know, I mean, look at Jarebko. He's only in 23 minutes. He's a five point. Who, who's to say? You know, I want somebody who's starting and getting loads of minutes. And then I want a high fantasy point per minute guy when I see that. So somebody like Hassan Whiteside at 1.39, if he gets the minutes, if he can just get his minutes, 
He should be pretty good tonight. 1.43 down here at Paul George. If he just gets his minutes, he's in a good matchup. Hit all three lists. Points, value, and and one matchup. Great pick tonight, potentially. Then you've got your other guys down in here that are sort of like your point eights and a 6X. Sarek, if his minutes open up, he's great. If minutes don't open up or opportunity doesn't open up for him, he's a turd trap. These are the ones you've got to watch out for, and this is what I'm hoping to bring to the VIPs as we go forward. That was a little bit of strategy we were talking about yesterday with uh, Fantasy Football Geek, with Kevin, our CEO. And I'll show you, actually, I'll show you this way why I'm going to point this out to you, because this is just last night's wins. There's Kevin. Just last night's wins. He hit $5,000 in one contest, won $8,000 on the night. This is the type of person you need to be getting your advice from. We've got A Speller here. Turn 209 into $672 on a clean suit. This is just, just your normal guy. This isn't the CEO of the of, of DFS Army. This is just a normal guy. A cool guy at that, but just your normal guy. Put together a lineup, turn 200 bucks into $672. Anybody can do, any of you can do that. We can show you how. Another one, Team Bruce, lower volume guy, but still, you know, 100 and some odd dollars. Bam, almost a grand last night. Another everyday member. We are turning Joes into DFS pros at DFS Army. And we do it every day. There's three of them for you right there. We had seven or ten that I showed you uh, over the weekend. And I'll continue to show you more as they keep happening. And these aren't little $20 and $30 wins. Those are great if that's you. That happens to be me. I play on a very small bankroll because I don't have the time anymore to really, really focus on things. My job is to help you focus on that since that's what you want to do. And so I maintain my finger on the pulse of the industry and the tools and everything else. But my job is to show you how to do this. Turn 100 into 1,000. And that's what the DFS Army is solely focused on doing. Turning Joes into pros and making you guys better players. So that you guys can get up here and compete with the CEO and win eight grand in a night if you want to. That's the deal. That's the idea. We'll save that right there for later. That's the tip of the day. Let's move on into PGA because I think the NBA, we've got some good targets to move forward on. We've got some stuff to listen to. We've got some coaches to listen to today, and we can keep rocking and rolling uh, with the PGA type stuff. Now, when we shift over to PGA, the season's just getting started. And we've got our Tournament of Champions wrapping up last week. We've got our first full field event this week out in Hawaii, the Sony Open, and your best breakdown period across the interview most thorough breakdown two chalk donkey is going to be outstanding when it drops i see josh is already editing it today so it'll be out today or tomorrow but when i look and that's vip only sorry but when we're looking at some of these guys in the pga course breakdowns and key stats and things like that you're not going to find a more thorough breakdown than josh is right here you want to find out what all this kind of stuff is you got to read his article you don't see a lot of bombers here you got bermuda greens and Bermuda greens are tricky, so tricky. Takes a good Bermuda putter to score well on those types of greens. How do I know that? I mean, I used to play a lot of golf myself at a competitive level. When I go into key stats, these are the key stats we're looking at. Driving accuracy, birdies gained, uh, birdies gained, strokes gained, approach, and projected course score. Those are the key factors, as noted by a couple of coaches today. There's the field. There's the Vegas odds. And then here are some of the players that we like off, just kind of off the top. Now, the deeper value plays, the deeper strategy plays, the game theory pivot, chalk donkey type pivots are going to be in his article for VIPs. But that gets you a good little start to the week, gives you something to think about and some targets to head out towards. Okay? When I look at the PGA Research Station, this is a beast too. This is something that's been three years of evolution that Taco has put together. That, and watch this. We, we see how it gets cut off over here? It'll grow. How many stats do you want to look at? I will point over here to average field strength. You can see which players play in stronger fields, how they perform overall, which players play in weaker fields, and how they perform overall. That can help tip you off to, you know, if it's a strong field this week, I might not play a guy who typically doesn't play in strong fields. I might focus a little bit more on some of those guys. I look at scoring stats, adjusted field rank, strokes gained. There's your strokes gained approach. There's your other stuff. You, you know, if you really want to dig in to the legend of this tool, you would go to the key here, and you would just start scrolling down. Every column is described for you. Very, very simple. 
Stroke Gain Page Showdown Tools. These will unlock on Friday when we do our Freebie Friday, but it'll be past lock for the main sheet to do any good for you, so you need to get in here today. I said we would do DraftKings. You need to get in here today and use that coupon code New Year for 20% off and unlock this beast. If it would load. There we go. A little bit. Look at the simulator tab in there if you download that bad boy. So when I come in here to DraftKings only, I can scroll I can scroll over. This is going to be a little bit better because the names don't disappear, right? And if I wanted to look at just strokes gained by approach, and I'll talk about one other little thing for you here in a second. Strokes gained by approach, I can sort that hopefully Z to A. And bring all these guys up to the top. Now I've got the guys that I might be focused on. Look for some of the cheaper guys in this list that are scoring, that are scoring well on their approach shots. And this might break some ties for you. This might be a category that you put a little bit of weight onto when you select your player pool. And you can obviously go into the optimizer and bump their projections a little bit and get these guys pulling to the top to help give you a little bit better advantage over the field today or this week. It's one way to go about doing things. The other thing that I would go about telling you. Let's sort here by DraftKings pricing again, bring the big guys to the top. And what I want you to look at is a couple of things. First of all, our opening odds and then our live, our live odds and our drift. Drift means how is the guy performing in Vegas right now? What is Vegas doing? Are they pushing his odds down? Are they pushing his odds up? Where did Vegas miss initially and where is Vegas adjusting to based on public money? Very important number for late, close-to-lock, tie-breaking situations. I don't know if I want Justin Thomas or Dustin Johnson this week. Uh-oh, Dustin Johnson, his odds dropped. Public money went in on other people and came off of Dustin Johnson. That would break my tie, and I would probably take Justin Thomas as a result. The other thing I would tell you is course history and recent form. What do these mean? Course history, obviously, how he's done at the course. Looks like Dustin Johnson plays out there every year. He's won twice in the last six years. Plays top 10 in four of the last six years. Pretty hard to argue that he likes the course. Recent form across the last few tournaments early in the season. These don't mean much yet, but they do show you how he finished up last year. And what I'm going to tell you is recent form does matter because golf is kind of a streaky sport like baseball, like, you know, hockey, like a lot of things, basketball, your shots just falling everywhere for a while, whatever. You can go on significant runs in golf just like anywhere else. But course history to me means quite a bit, not on a weekly basis, but on specific courses or on a course that a guy typically does well on. Treat it like BVP when it comes to baseball and, and, and MLB because when I own a pitcher, I know it. When I always hit a, when I crush a pitcher, I know it. When he owns me, I know it. And that mentally gives me confidence and puts fear in me, depending on which way I slide. Courses, golf courses do the same thing. Golfers are not robots, they're humans. Believe me, Dustin Johnson knows he owns Hawaii. Not afraid to go out there, goes out there every year, loves it. Patrick Reed probably loves Hawaii. You know, if I saw a bunch of MCs in here for missed cuts, then the guy might struggle a little bit. He might stop going out there. But the guys that are out there and typically do well at the course are guys that, if their recent form is good, are guys that I want to look at. Okay? I compare it to a little story I'll tell you here real quickly in my own little golfing when I played a lot of golf as a kid and played very, very competitively all the way up through high, uh, through high school at, at a, you know, at a state level and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not a complete schlep when it comes to golf. I know what I'm talking about. And mentally, there are specific holes that can screw with you. I had a golf course I played six or seven times. Second time I played it, I was about 15, 16 years old. And I was three under going in through the first three holes, got to a dogleg right par five with a crosswind left to right, 30 mile an hour howling spring wind. And I went, I wanted to go high up the left side, stay well away from the OB on the right and stay out of trouble. And damned if I didn't heal it just a touch, my wrists lagged a little bit at impact and I sent that baby to the right. And I'm telling you, it got up, started up left side of the fairway just fine. It had just enough of a tail on it, and I hit it just high enough. The wind just took it all the way out of bounds. And all I could do was sit there and watch 
all of my early round work disappear as that ball just drifted and drifted and drifted toward houses. I was so pissed off. But that was such a hard shot for me going forward mentally. The next four, five, six, seven times I played that course, I every time I could go, I haven't played that course for 20 years. I could go back to that course. I could stand on that tee box, and that's the first memory that's going to pop into my head. Not the other five or six times I played it right or performed well. I've birdied the hole multiple times. But the first thought that's going to get into my mind is that one time. And believe me, you're nuts if you don't think golfers don't go through the exact same thing. Watching course history can help. It's not the end all and be all. I'm overblowing it a little bit, but it can help. And when you see a guy own a course like Dustin Johnson owns, it's a pretty strong factor he's going to be successful out there this week. That's the main point of what I'm telling you. And a cheaper guy like a Patrick Reed might want to be another anchor in your roster. Scroll down here a little bit. Top 20 finishes out of Snedeker. You know, you might want to get away from the orange guys a little bit or the guys with no experience on the course a little bit and see if you can't stick to some of these guys. And I'm not saying all six of them. I'm just saying a couple of them. Okay? And guys that also perform. If you watch some of their key stats, and this is another thing that, that a lot of people don't tell you, a lot of coaches don't tell you. Watch the guys that perform well at a course, and then watch their key stats. Which key stats of theirs are better than others? You know, driving accuracy, not so great, but he's had success at the course. Driving accuracy, maybe not so important out there. You know, maybe some of the greener stats. So we scroll over, and I'm just looking at Patrick Reed right now, because he's going to have some decent green stats around the green, important for his game. Nothing bright green. But fantasy scoring stats for Patrick Reed here, short par fours. Does the scorecard have some short par fours on it? This is the one way you can tell. And then go looking at other guys that have, so let's look at, let's just take short, short par fours, for instance. And we'll look, okay, Dustin Johnson also does well on short par fours. Justin Thomas, no surprise that they have success at this course too. There's a common thread in there. And then you might take a shot on a Mark Leishman. Because he does very well on short par fours. And if it works for Patrick Reed and it works for Dustin Johnson and it works for Justin Thomas, that's an indicator that this is a good week to maybe look at Mark Leishman. This is how you use, as you think your way through these pages and these research tools, it's one little tip to you. Okay. The other tip I'll leave you with as we round out today is what I was talking about when contest allocation comes into play and why the coaching at DFS Army is so valuable. I was approached 50 bucks. I have $50 in my bankroll. What's the best way to go? And I said, you're looking to play about five bucks a day. I can't do much with 50 bucks. I mean, you can, but it's going to be a slower grind. And he came back at me and said, no, I meant 50 for tonight. Well, that changes a lot of things. Here's three options for you. Option A, I'm a three lineup guy, so I option, I'm option C. But one lineup, I would spread out the ladder system and I would get exposure. Half of my budget would go into cash games, 50-50s, head-to-heads. Why? If I hit those, I break even across my lineup. I'm on house money the rest of the way. If my lineup does a little bit better, because I'm going to build for the triple-ups and the quintuple-ups, and I'm going to hope to miss and still make the cash games. But if I hit the triple-up, then I'm sitting on $30 profit on my 50 bucks. So I'd bring in to put in 30, or 50, take out 80. Another 50 bucks for the quintuple-up. Put in 50, come out with 130. $5 in GPP so that my lineup can continue going if I have a truly great day. That's boom or bust with all or one lineup. I might do two lineups. I might hedge. 60, you know, two-thirds on one lineup, a third on another lineup. And I broke it down for the guy and how I would do it on 50 bucks. Option C, three lineups equally spread. I'm that way. I like to widen my player pool a little bit instead of just settling in on one quarterback or two running backs or something. I, I, I don't mind taking Ezekiel Elliott last week in two of three lineups, but I don't want him in all three. I'm going to expand my player pool. I might want some Dak, and I might want some Andrew Luck. I might want to spread it around a little bit. That's how I typically play. It gives me a little bit more buffer, a little bit more cushion. It, lives, it gives me a little bit. I can hit two out of three cash games. That's okay. 
and break even on two of the three. And one of them will typically do really, really well, get into the profit, make my overall week profitable. It's harder for me to go completely bust in this situation. It's not hard for me to go completely bust with only one lineup. It's very easy for me to lose two weeks, three weeks, even four weeks in a row on only one lineup. So I'm going to toss out three lineups and insulate myself a little bit. Now, I also cap my upside, but I'm okay with that. I, I'm a grinder. I don't mind grinding. I'll occasionally hit deep money in a GPP or really run a big sweep across a ladder that turns like you saw in 87 entries that the guy had and turns you know, 200 into 650 bucks or something like that. And that'll make up for a couple of losing weeks, a couple of bad weeks. That's fine. I don't very often go 0 for 3. That's the way my game is built. Maybe yours is built all in one lineup. Maybe you're a hedge guy, whatever. I can cater to you. I can coach you and help you with your bankroll, help you with your contest selection. That's my niche. That's where I really go. I show you these tools. I show you that we have everything in place for you to become a better player, but the coaching is what really makes the difference. Hopefully you see that. If you want more information like that, you got to go down. you got to hit DFSArmy.com. Use coupon code New Year for that 20% off this week. This week only, mind you. And you got to jump in here today. Why wait? We got also we got NBA coming. We've got NFL information getting ready to roll out. We've got our optimizers fully loaded. We've got golf getting ready to kick off. You guys, you're missing out if you don't get in here right away. It's going to make your overall NFL game better come next year because you're going to learn all of these different factors and ways to build lineups. It's going to make you a better player, I promise. I learned from my first year here to my second year here. I learned exactly that. Oh my god, my NFL game got better. I was here for NFL. Here I am five years later editing content for a site because my game has grown to levels that I could not have possibly fathomed. And it's all because I have mentors and coaches that I listen to and that guide me in my journey of DFS. And I can do the same thing for you as well as all the other coaches here can. Beginner or expert doesn't really matter. We've got the coaches in place that can help you out. I get advice every single day. I wouldn't consider myself an expert, but I consider myself an upper level intermediate for sure. Jump on in here, coupon code New Year, trigger that 20% off saving. Click the like and the subscribe button while you're down there, ring the notification bell. Thanks for all the help out on Twitter, guys. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. We will see you later.